Malachi, my messenger. Malachi 2, 17 through 4, 6. Lesson 2. Introduction. 1. In the last section of the book of Malachi, we find a. More indications of the, their spiritual and moral decay. 2. Promises concerning the coming Messiah. They were trying God's patience. A. By questioning the justice of God. Malachi 2.17 1. They had wearied God with their words. 2. Especially regarding his justice. A. For they said that those who do evil is good in God's sight, that he even delights in them. B. For they ask, Where is the God of justice? B. The Lord's response will be to send his messenger. Malachi 3, 1-5 1. Through 5. One, first, the messenger who will prepare his way for him. Malachi 3, 1a a. A clear reference to John the Baptist. b. Compare Isaiah 43, Matthew 3, 1-3, and 11, 7-10. 2. Then will appear the messenger of the covenant. Malachi 3, 1b. a. Here the reference is to Christ, the Messiah, for which they had longed. b who certainly came to his temple, Matthew 21, 12. C, and was a messenger of a new covenant, Matthew 26, 26 through 28. Three, his coming will be one to purge his people, Malachi 3, 2 through 5. A, like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. B, the sons of Levi, the priests, especially, that their offerings may be acceptable. C. He will come near to judge those who do not fear the Lord. See Matthew 3, 11 and 12. With the coming of the messenger of the covenant, they would have their answer to the questions, Where is God's justice? They were forsaking God's ordinances. A. God charges them with inconsistency. Malachi 3, 6 and 7. 1. Unlike God himself, whose unchanging nature has kept him from totally consuming Israel. Malachi 3, 6. 2. Yet their history showed a practice of apostasy. Malachi 3, 7 a. 3. Even when called to return, they ask, In what way shall we return? Malachi 3, 7 b. 4. No answer is given directly. A. Perhaps because the answer is so obvious it does not deserve a response. B. Or the answer is given by an example which follows. B. Their tithes as a cast in point. Malachi 3, 8 through 12. 1. They had robbed God by their failure to offer their tithes. Malachi 3, 8. 2. For this reason the whole nation has been accursed. Malachi 3.9 3. Three, they are challenged to bring the tithes and to see the blessings that would follow. Malachi 3.10-12 They were despising God's service. A. By saying it was vain to serve God. Malachi 3.13-15 1. Their words were harsh against God. Malachi 3.13 2. Questioning what profit there was in keeping his ordinances. Malachi 3.14 3. Calling the proud blessed, saying the wicked are raised up and those who tempt God go free. Malachi 3.15 B. Yet some began to heed Malachi's message. Malachi 3.16-4.6 1. Those who feared the Lord as they spoke to one another. Malachi 3:16a 2 whom the Lord noticed and a book of remembrance was written Malachi 3:16b 3 whom the Lord promised to make his jewels and spare them Malachi 3:17a it will be easy to discern the righteous Malachi 3:18b 
For the day was coming when the wicked will be burned like stubble. Malachi 4.1 C. Those who fear his name will be blessed by the Son of Righteousness. Jesus. Malachi 4, 2 and 3. 4. Until then, a. The faithful are exhorted to heed the law of Moses. Malachi 4, 4. b. And wait for the coming of Elijah the prophet, John the Baptist, who will come to prepare people for the coming of the Lord. Malachi 4, 5 and 6. Also Luke 1, 16 and 17. Conclusion 1. As with most prophets, Malachi had a message for both the present and the future. a. Exhorting the people to look at themselves, how they were guilty of 1. Doubting God's love 2. Dishonoring God's name 3. Profaning God's covenant 4. Trying God's patience 5. Forsaking God's ordinances 6. Despising God's service. Note, these points were adapted from Wearsby's Be Amazed commentary. B. Encouraging the people to look forward to the coming of 1. God's messenger, John, who would come in the spirit of Elijah and prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. 2. The messenger of the covenant, Jesus, who would come to refine and purify those willing to repent and bring judgment on those who do not fear the Lord. 2. It is encouraging to note that some evidently took Malachi's message to heart. Malachi 3, 16-18 A. Whom the Lord would claim as His B. Whom the Lord would make His jewels C. Whom the Lord would spare as man spares his own son who serves him. As we come to the close of this survey of the minor prophets, perhaps it is appropriate to ask, are we willing to take the prophets' messages to heart? They are written for our learning and admonition. See Romans 15.4 and 1 Corinthians 10.11. They help make us wise for the salvation which by faith in Christ. See 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 15. They are certainly profitable for instruction in righteousness. See 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. I pray that in some way this series has helped you to appreciate the value of studying the minor prophets and making application of them to your life. This ends our study of Malachi, My Messenger, Lesson 2. And here ends our study of the Minor Prophets.